Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Duke of Westminster has escaped paying inheritance tax on a fortune estimated at more than eight and a half billion, nine billion pounds. The estate appears to have been in family trusts, which were passed to his son, now the seventh Duke. The example may be a rather exotic one, but the question of inheritance tax is one that has divided this country for decades. Should children get to inherit their parents' wealth? And to the question that threw the entire Conservative election campaign into chaos, should it make any difference if there is social care to be paid for? in the parents' old age. Chris Cook's been looking at the numbers. The housing market is one of Britain's biggest problems. It's probably not much of a shock to you that house prices have risen rapidly in recent decades. The average price is now around £200,000, although that hides enormous variation between the southeast and the rest of the country in particular. Inheritance tax policy has responded by raising the point at which tax is due. So the explosion in house prices hasn't been matched by inheritance tax receipts. It is still only bringing in about £4.7 billion a year. So that rise in asset values hasn't been tapped very efficiently by the government. If we look at deaths registered on the HMRC database, where there's no surviving spouse, in 2014-15, there were 140,000 estates containing housing. That's a stock of properties assessed at about £30 billion. Now, the total amount spent on care for older people by and through local authorities is about £7 billion. And the government spends a further £4.7 billion on attendance allowance to support older people who need care. The King's Fund and Nuffield Trust estimate that we really need to add in more money, up to an additional three and a half billion pounds a year. What was dubbed the dementia tax at the election was really an attempt to move cash from that 30 billion pound property pile into the other. At the moment, each year, people die with all that housing wealth, which largely passes with a little bit of tax taken out to their families. At the same time, we need to find more money to care for a lot of those people in the years before they die. So why not take a bit more of that 30 billion pounds? Our policy editor Chris Cook with the numbers and joining us now as news editor at the Institute of Economic Affairs, Kate Andrews, and the political economist Will Hutton. Welcome to you both. Nice to see you. Um, well, why not, Kate, actually? I mean, this whole idea of inheritance wealth is completely out of date, isn't it? Uh, I do think inheritance tax is out of date, but I'm not sure that this new policy to fund social care is the right way to go about it. Um, you know, not inheritance tax, inheritance wealth. The well, wealth inheritance that you wealth, have. sure, but you know, people shouldn't have to choose between accessing social care and whether or not they can pass on their home. That shouldn't have to be the choice on the table. Uh, and I, I think that this policy really has gotten that wrong in some respects. What we need to do is fundamentally look at the way that we we fund health care overall. We need to move to some kind of pre-funded insurance system. What national insurance is essentially supposed to be but hasn't been used for it but when you just play around with those numbers as Chris Cook was doing there 30 billion that gets passed down and only 3 billion needed to cover that funding gap it makes total sense I don't think it's fair in six months or a year's time to say to somebody, if you have dementia, you're going to have to risk giving up the assets that you have accumulated over the course of your life, which could otherwise be given to your family. I'm not, I understand where they're coming from on the policy, but I do think it's misguided, and it, it stops us from having a much wider discussion about intergenerational unfairness and what we need to do to make sure that we have a pre-funded mm. system so that as demographic shifts, the tax burden doesn't fully fall on young people. Will, it was 10 years ago uh, this week, I think, or last week, that George Osborne went before Tory conference and said he's going to raise inheritance tax to £1 million, one of the most popular policies the Tories had come up with that stopped Gordon Brown from calling an election. You're never going to put the British people off that idea, are you, of being able to hand on their house, their wealth to their kids? Well, there's been a fantastically successful 
program of disinformation about this. I mean, I, uh, you know, uh, house prices are stunningly high in relation to income, much higher um, now even than, well, getting back to their all-time highs. You know, there's the five trillion pounds worth of housing wealth and 30 billion pounds that gets handed on every year. I mean, we've, we've created this kind of gigantic onshore tax haven that is the British residential property market. Uh, inheritance tax is minimal, there's no capital gains tax, the council tax is trivial, uh, and actually uh, I would prefer um, a system of social insurance to deal with um, their care in the old age, and it's, mm. a, it's a pity that the two things get conflated. But if you're asking a straight question, uh, should some of that housing wealth be hypothecated in some way uh, to mesh, to kind of segue into a social insurance system, uh, to kind of deal with actually the financing gap, this answer is an unambiguous yes, and it's great that a Tory minister has opened this up. Right, because she has really, Jackie uh, Price Doyle is the one we should uh, refer to, who said, why should young people, taxpayers, financially prop up elderly people's care when they might be sitting on an asset that they want to hand down to their own kids? Why should? the average young taxpayer who's already dealing with all the other debts and problems yeah. be paying for that? Well, they, they shouldn't. Somebody who can't get onto the housing ladder in the first place shouldn't be propping up other people to keep their big homes. I do. I agree. I, I agree with that in principle. So but, what are you going to do about but, it? Well, we need to talk about this issue of, of housing overall, I think, because one of the reasons that inequality um, skyrocketed in Britain, not so much so in the past decade, but previously, is because houses became so expensive. Sure. So it can't be seen as a given, can it, that your city on a big house is just because other people haven't been allowed to buy sure, their own. Sure, but let's get to the real root of this problem. It's an issue of supply. Housing costs keep going up because we just don't have enough houses to meet demand. We need to build more homes. This of would course. actually bring down the cost of housing and would really tackle that issue of intergenerational unfairness. Get young that. people on the housing ladder. Go. It's not just a question of not building, and I'm in, I'm in agreement with you. Mm. It's also that actually there's been an astonishing amount of kind of credit via uh, quantitative easing, 445 mm. billion, mm -hmm. and over and above that, this kind of nature of, of British property that it is actually a tax haven. And, uh, you know, we have come over a 40-year period, all the British, everyone watching this programme knows that actually the best investment you can make is to borrow money and actually this, your house price goes up and you, make a, and you get wealthy that way. And, we, and she is right, the Minister, to say that actually people now think of housing not as a place to live but as an asset class. And we should not be thinking of it in those terms, and we should not be thinking of it as something that you that you, so, that, that, you that you that you hold in order to pass on to your children because it's an asset. Let class. me push it you on then. To the, disfigures, to the, it disfigures it disfigures the housing market, and it creates massive okay. intergenerational. But well, I want to push you on because there was one yeah, question okay. that completely sent the whole election campaign flying, and this was that one of dementia tax. Mm -hmm. Would you were you in agreement? Was that the right way for the Conservative or any government to go? It was a mistake. It was a. But having said that, I mean, she should have, she should have stuck with social insurance. Nick, Nick Timothy should not have inserted that but a in. But compulsory insurance? Because nobody wants to buy insurance against Alzheimer's. Because everyone no, but you mitigate, that they you might... mitigate, you mitigate the price of the insurance by actually either in the private or the public sector offering to put part of um, the wealth in your house um, against your care bills. I mean, you mitigate the price of insurance. That was pretty so much can, what was offered, but, though, but wasn't But that it? was what Dilnot was trying to do in his Dilnot report. No, because what was she was the the problem with that was it was the with the with the proposal that Theresa May came up was you were only going to be left with hundred k. I mean, you're going to strip people of all their assets. So it was just the sum she got wrong. It was a the, no okay. one's after no one's after kind of taking every single penny off um, people um, who are approaching kind of the end of their lives and who... What is the solution it, 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 I, What I, proportion I, I you take? 10, 15, 20%? I think it 15, was 20%? the wrong yeah. policy overall, but we must acknowledge that inheritance tax is quite ineffective. It raises something like one-fourth of one percent of GDP. I still think that these are small fixes to tackle, tackle the overall issue, um, and I believe that the solution lies somewhere in pre-funded insurance, but also let's look at some of these grandstanding projects like HS2 that are estimated by the government to cost $60 billion. There's your social care funding for the next decade. Let's tackle, the, let's get yeah, a hold on the money that we have now before we start increasing taxes elsewhere. Okay. The okay. inheritance tax is not a death tax. It's a we share in and your it good we, tax. It's, it's we share in your good luck tax. Okay. We share in your good luck. It's not a death tax. And once you start looking at it like that, you can get somewhere. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you.